What's up guys, Channel Hunter here with Rise Magic and today we're going to do a deck review of the Guard Playing Cards by Bacopo Playing Card Company. Strap in, buckle up, because this review, this, this video is going to be so jam packed with information that you might overdose. You're going to say that's way too much information, you're going to click out because it's so much information so quickly. Quick little caveat, little note, little, little cliff note we got going on here. Uh, this video is sponsored by Bacopo, meaning that they sent me this deck for review. However, when they sent it to me, I was like, yo, if it sucks, I'm going to say it sucks, all right? All right? And they were like, that's cool. We're just going to send you it, see how you like it. So, unbiased, I did get it for free, but unbiased as in, I can say it sucks, but it doesn't. First off, we're going to go with design. Now, I actually really like the design of these playing cards. One of the things that I pay attention to primarily is the colors in the deck. Get it? Because primary colors. So this deck has a lot of green in it, and I don't have a lot of green decks. Oh shoot. Yeah, I was gonna play Fortnite right after I finished this review. Let's uh, close that up. So, yeah, I don't have a lot of green decks, but this is a nice, nice like naturist, naturalist green. This is a nice green. Now what I also like about the design of this deck is it reminds me of like The Legend of Zelda or one of my favorite games of all time, the Monster Hunter series. The design that you got going on in the faces and the symbols that you have on the back. I just really like the theme. It's kind of like this, this medieval yet fantasy world type thing. So overall, really like the design, really like the theme they got going with design, and I really like the features they added so it looks really cool when you fan the deck. As you can see, there's those frills on the pips when you fan it out, those green things. So when you fan it faces out, it looks cool. And when you fan it backs out, it looks cool. And when you do all sorts of flourishes, the geometry that is infused into the design really makes it a prime time visual piece of eye candy. Box and contents. I forgot to do this first and I would have just edited it to put it first, but I had the laptop up in the background so you guys would have noticed. But box and contents, you have 52 playing cards, right? You got all your faces, all your suits, all that jazz, as well as four ad cards. You got this little geometric one that talks all about what the deck is about. I'll let it get in focus so you can check it out right here. Then we have this seal, uh, once again, not the animal, and then kind of like the logo joint here. I would say it's sort of like a joker. Another ad card for Bacopo with some more geometry. Another ad card with more geometry. You could make like some little thing on your desk. Like, uh, yeah, you get the point. Now these 52 playing cards are not standard faces. In fact, they are far from it. Uh, this deck would be pretty difficult to do magic with because the faces are so abnormal, but I like it. Because here's the thing, you have cards that are made for Karshi, like the Karshi Touch deck, that the faces are all the similar. You could never play a card game for them or show magic. Now these, I'm most likely never going to do magic with them because the faces are so abnormal, but if I needed to, I still could. And if I needed to play a card game, I still could. So you kind of have the best of both worlds. You have the artistic faces that look better for cardistry. You know, not that standard stuff we got going on over there for cardistry, but you could still use them for magic. In my opinion, you should stick to like more standard decks for magic. And then when you want to bust out your artistic side, get all artsy fartsy, bam, this is the design deck that could definitely suit those needs. Once again, we got another pun there because I said suit and there's suits and playing cards. I have to explain my jokes on this channel now. Even if they're like really obvious, like even when I like write on something that's a joke, people still don't get it's a joke. So I, I'm explaining them now. All right. Shout out to those of you who get me though. Next, we have arguably the most important part of a deck of playing cards, the handling. Now, I've been on my pedestal about this before. 99.9% .9 of decks that are printed nowadays handle phenomenally, and this is no exception. So it's almost like I have to include handling in the reviews, but all decks printed nowadays are gonna handle great. I would say this feels a lot like a bicycle deck, but in a good way, as in it has a nice kind of thickish stock that's good for double lifts and slides like that. Well, it's still kind of thin and springy and light for all those flickering, you know, jazz that people like to do with the uh, carsters. So, I mean, I really won't stick around this too much. The handling is A1. Uh, for those of you who don't know who A1 means, it means like it's really good because A is the first letter of the alphabet, so it's like number one. And then one is like 
the first number, so it's like number one. So it's like a double positive A1. So the deck is A1. The, the, the handling is A1. And it's also A1 steak sauce. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, pricing. This deck is gonna run you about 12 and a half buckaroodles. Okay, so that is kind of right in the middle of the range of what a, a custom deck of playing cards runs nowadays. Those custom decks are usually between 10 and $15 on almost all websites, like 311, Illusionist. So this falls right in the middle of that kind of 10 to $15 range. Unless you charge like 30 bucks for playing cards that don't cost that much to make. That's your own objective. All that being said, I like to do standard magic with the two to four dollar deck range like bicycles and tally hose. That way I could care less about ripping them, burning them, uh, and throwing them at spectators to murder them with. That way, when it's all bloody and I have to cover up the crime, I don't feel bad about throwing out the card because it wasn't that expensive. Now, if you wanna buy a custom deck, they're normally gonna run you between 12 and $15. That's what almost all the websites are selling custom decks for nowadays, so this falls right in the middle. You'll actually find them on bacopo.com for $12.49, and you'll find them on rise-magic.com backslash store, actually forward slash store, for $12.48. You just got undercut, Bacopo. Your move. So you might be thinking, but what's the verdict? What's the conclusion? Well, here's the conclusion. You have a deck that has incredible design on the front and the back of it, really unique illustrations, really unique geometry, pip design. It's gonna look phenomenal with any cardistry moves you do. And compared to lots of the custom decks out there, it actually is extremely unique with what it's got going on with the geometry and the pips and the stripe in the middle. It looks really cool whether you're showing the faces or the back. Besides that, it handles great and its price is right right in that price range that's pretty normal nowadays. So if you think it's worth it, you like the deck, go ahead and cop it, whether it's through Bacopa or us. If you don't think it's worth it, I'm not gonna tell you to buy it. You make your own decision. You're a grown man or woman. Depends on the demographics of this YouTube channel, which is about 95% male and 5% female. But we don't discriminate here, so no matter your gender, if you like the deck, buy it. If you don't, don't. I'm just here to show you what I like about it. So that is your jam-packed deck review. So much information, so quickly. I am so wired right now. I'm gonna go play Fortnite, cop in our solo dub. Feel free to add me, Chan the Man 31 Grant is Axton Cruz. Come squad up with us. Uh, besides that, school starts like tomorrow, so. It was nice knowing you guys. Peace.